Do you remember the scouting process when you guys were scouting Brady? You know, really, it was, yeah, the number one thing you want to see on a football player is what does he do in the games? I, I mean, it's, you know, that that is, it's kind of a bottom line business. And when you get somebody who goes in and plays well in the games, that's what gets your attention. And we had, you know, one one person you never knew, uh, you know, great guy, Dick Rabine, was our quarterback coach who unfortunately died during training camp in 2001. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, got on a treadmill and, you know, had a uh, uh, had had a heart issue, and, and he died. But you know, you get you know, you look, you don't try to make it too complicated. If a guy goes in the game against good competition and plays well, that is what we're trying to do. It's not about you know the combine stuff, which is important. Uh, but you know, it's it's really what does the guy do when he gets on the field against good competition? And so you get Brady. Hey, have a, have a great bowl game against Alabama. I mean, you know, and play well when you when you're in there. There's a lot of things as a player you can't control, but what you can control is what you actually do when you get out on the field. He always used to talk about that. When did you know he was a killer? You know, when I first Tom's rookie year in 2000, he was like he he was like the third string quarterback, and he was not going to get in the game. I mean, you know, unless you look. If you have two guys get injured in the same game, he can get in, but it wasn't going to happen. And after practice, he would go horse, he would go grab uh, our young rookie tight end, uh, Chris Eitzman, and take him over on the side and make Chris run patterns for him. But it wasn't just running patterns. Tom wanted to call the play. It's third and six. All right, Eitz, this is the play we're going to run. Call it out, you know. Because Tom wanted to put himself through the situation. Here's here's the way I'm going to call the play in this situation. It's not just let's just go, ha- you know, go run, go run around and play catch. You know, we're actually thinking a game, thinking situations, and, and you know. And I always figured if a player's going to stay out late after practice, somebody should, you know, honor him by going over and watching. So I'm just standing watching this. You know, this guy, he's really trying to get ready to play, uh, even though he has no chance of playing this week. And of course. Tom's the guy, yeah, if he wanted to get in the right stance, how do you get in the right stance? You practice it in front of the mirror. You just do, you know, being obsessive compulsive can get you in trouble sometimes, but it can also lead to great results. Yeah. And that's the way I kind of look at that. You know, t- Tom is the ultimate you know, obsessive compulsive, you know, among players because he's not, you know, Tom Brady didn't just drop out of the sky a Hall of Fame quarterback. He made himself into a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yep. And when people would tell me at the draft, yeah, I work, I work hard as Brady. Hey, you're full of shit. You have no idea what you're talking about. And, and that's it's the... 100% cor- correct. I mean, I, I got there. He already had three Super Bowls, and he was still flying in a coach week 11 to work on his little fundamentals after a practice. That, hey, but you know what? If that he, was when he, I mean, he was a four... You know, that, that's hey, what well, people don't see. They don't see, they don't understand. And that was kind of like when I was talking about being impressed with Peyton Manning warming up before the game. I mean, when it's football now, I mean, it's dead ass serious, 100% every time. Yeah, there, there's no, you don't take any plays off in practice. He never did. Never, never did. And, he, and you know what? He would, if, if, if you ran around, first time he'd say, hey, Jules, we really want to do it this way. And then he expects you to get it right that second time. Oh, yeah. Hey, if, if you might not quite understand the first time, that's not a problem. Screwing up after he explained it to you, ah, that's a problem. Make a mistake. He just can't make the same mistake twice. Right. And with him, you know, I was a punching bag for him because the more success that we had, he could never really get on guys as hard as he wanted to because, they, you know, they've been watching him since before they were born. You know what I mean? So it got yeah. to a point where you know, it, was, it was good to see him do that. 